thank Dr. Honan for uh, informing us about uh, the new program that we're all extremely excited about. Uh, and hopefully, as I stated earlier, that this program can become a model, Alabama can become a model for the entire nation. Uh, we're running a little bit behind, but as I said earlier this morning, uh, as Southwest Airlines pilot often state, uh, once we in the air, uh, we'll make up some time. Uh, our next speaker uh, is not a stranger uh, to any of us in, in, in this room. She's a remarkable young lady. Uh, I was speaking with one of her staff members yesterday and uh, I had met him uh, probably a month or so ago and we were standing under the basketball rim there at uh, Kimbrough Garden, Pastor Hill, the uh, uh, vacation Bible school and this young man looks at me and um, he came up and, and he said, you know, uh, so Brother Mill, he said, uh, Christy is just so passionate uh, about heal. She's so passionate about helping people. I said, Christy Sway, you gotta be kidding. She's kind of like some days ago, isn't it? And, but no, but no, uh, just kidding, but she is, uh, she's passionate, uh, she's bright, and uh, most of you all, uh, those of you all who watched Bay, <coughs> a program called Baywatch some years ago, uh, Christy actually was on Baywatch, I understand, for a number of years, six or seven years. Uh, she's a, a true professional in her own rights and uh, just a tremendous testimony, a tremendous uh, background, but uh, she loves her faith uh, very passionately. She loves people very passionately. So uh, I'm going to let her actually introduce her own self, but she, she's an incredible person. And so let's give a big round of applause for Chris Sway. and my brothers and I lived in Southside Chicago and they were married until I was about five years old and after that my dad kind of disappeared for a while to reinvent himself and my mom was raising my two brothers and I as a single parent and it was quite a struggle. Technical difficulties, <coughs> we'll get through it. Um, uh, all of a sudden, my dad was no longer living with us, and I didn't understand. Did you? It yeah. worked a minute ago. Yeah, the, oh. yeah, the jump. Uh, no, jump is by you. So why don't we just pop in this? All right, I'll just start with my thoughts since we are on a time crunch. Um, how much time do we have, Mike? Um, probably. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. You, you, you good. Uh, blast off. And you, 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 you good. Okay. We're queuing up a little uh, bio reel of my past and my career. And, um, and it ties into why I do what I do today. And so uh, as they get that going, I'll just start off and talking about um, Anno. Anno, Alabama, not number one. Okay, my past is extreme sports. I used to race jet skis and cars. I did film and television stunts. And yes, stunts on Baywatch um, was part of, of uh, what paid the bills. And so I like being number one. Number one paid the bills. I don't like not being number one for good stuff. I do not want to be number one for bad stuff. And there's plenty of that out there. So um, the play on that phrase that I would resonate with is a new year. Alabama, not number one, a new year. 
I like that part because every day we have a chance to get up out of bed and we've got a white canvas and we've got a new day and that new day could be the beginning of a new year. And that's what I'm looking at today as. Today is the launch of a new year because we need new. A lot of us already know that we gotta eat better and we have to move more. And we know why. A lot of us are very educated, <laughs> but why don't we do it? Maybe it's because we're depressed or we're overwhelmed, overworked, uh, just can't seem to get it together. And so I have so much compassion for that because um, as you'll see maybe if the video works, uh, there was a time in my life that uh, I was racing and winning and, and you know, very physically fit, but then my competition creeped up on me and took me down and drove me into injuries and overtraining. And I always thought more was better, but no, it was making me worse. And it was through the, the suffering of a setback that hurt me mentally, spiritually, physically, all of it. I'm acquainted with what suffering feels like. I know we are all acquainted with what suffering feels like. It was really interesting how our last speaker, Dr. Bogart, talked about the Greek meaning of the word suffering. Well, actually the word patient. As a patient, it is the one who suffers. I think every one of us have been the patient in different seasons of our lives. And how nice it is when someone will partner alongside of us and, and lift us up in our suffering. Wow, what a blessing. And I'll tell you, nothing is greater and nothing gives me more joy than to play a part in helping another. And nothing makes me more thankful than when someone partners with me when I'm having a bad day. And I'll say that health and fitness, this is a journey of reinvention, okay? We are every day going to have to reinvent, why do I want to do this today? Because I really don't, okay? Well, go back over it. Well, because I don't want this and I don't want that. But I'll tell you what the greatest trigger and the most important why, oh good, is that, um, is love, okay? There is no motivation that will drive you harder and longer than that. So he says, love your neighbor as yourself. It's not wrong to love yourself. You don't want to be a narcissist and you don't want to be selfish, but you do want to apply self-care because then you'll be better prepared to help others. And if that's your heart, that will roll upon itself. That will, that will gain momentum. That will give you sustainability. And, and I've seen it over and over. I've seen little ones say, learn in class that I can teach grandma how to bake chicken instead of fry it and ask her to walk outside with me because I can help her regulate her blood pressure. And I get thousands of testimonies now saying exactly that. That's a script that I hear all the time. And that makes the little one so happy and proud. And why does grandma change her ways? Because of love. The love of a child saying, Grandma, you've got to do this for me. And what won't you do for the ones you love? And I've got four boys that walked in on me. These are my sons, Christian and Jason, and my nephews, Hunter and Nikki. What a, what a blessing. So that puts a smile on my face. Let's go ahead and roll video. My parents and my brothers and I lived in Southside Chicago, and they were married until I was about five years old. And after that, my dad kind of disappeared for a while to reinvent himself, and my mom was raising my two brothers and I as a single parent, and it was quite a struggle. All of a sudden, my dad was no longer living with us, and I didn't understand why. My father is a lot of fun, and he bought a whole bunch of jet skis and decided to open up the first ever jet ski rental in South Florida. So when I was in Florida, 
and heard about this jet ski tour traveling across the nation and that they were coming to our hometown. I said, oh my gosh, sign me up. I have got to be in that. <laughs> After the first race, I was hooked. I went back to Chicago and told my mom, I am going to be a jet ski racer. And my mother said, oh no, you're going to be an A student. She thought that was silly and really didn't see my dad forging my career path. <laughs> I believe the jet ski career path was more than just a fun way to try to make a living. It was a calling because all the other doors I was pursuing were not opening up, but yet this one was wide open. Christy's passion for water sports led to an impressive competitive career. She won the title of world champion jet ski racer six times, more than any woman in the history of the sport. She was inducted into the International Personal Watercraft Hall of Fame, nominated for the Alabama Sports Hall of Fame, and won extreme sports competitions all over the world. Before long, television was calling Christy. She joined the team of the popular show Baywatch as a stunt double. She assisted with water safety advising. Sportscasters noticed her. She hosted and was featured on shows like Fox Sports, the Outdoor Channel, and the ESPN. Christy Carlson was a rising star, but as the old cliche says, all good things must come to an end. I was racing on a watercraft that was breaking my back. It was heavy, it was hitting every wave. The abuse on my body was tremendous, and my competitor was fresh as a daisy, and she just took the championship away from me, which was devastating on many levels. My mother always taught me that there's always a greater good to be concerned with. So jet ski racing was entertaining and fun and paid the bills. But she said, you also really need to see if there's a need that you could meet that is one of service for the glory of the Lord. I started noticing children just everywhere I looked. That's what I noticed. And I noticed children in Alabama were living in unhealthy bodies way too early in life to be carrying extra pounds that would absolutely be debilitating for them or at least restrictive for the rest of their life. So my husband said when I was really kind of a fish out of water, so to speak, he said, if you see something that would be meaningful to you that you want to get involved in or do, I'll support it 100%. He wanted me to be fulfilled. came up with HEAL. HEAL is an acronym that stands for Healthy Eating, Active Living, because really it's the hinge of those two things that are the essential ingredients for having good health, nutrition and exercise. To me, it's, it's a rescue mission. Nothing different than what I did on the water, except now it's rescuing children from the path of disease. If we can try to help a child adopt healthy behaviors before age 10, before these chronic diseases become established, then the, the future you've offered them is so much brighter. So you have a purpose in life that allows you to make someone else's life better is the most rewarding and fulfilling thing you can do. My husband loves medicine because he's able to help people who are in need. I love preventive care because I'm able to help people who are in need. And there's such a satisfaction that comes from helping others. So it was through injury and a setback that I was fortunate to be introduced to sports performance and rehab specialists that introduced me to heart rate technology. And that was a game changer. Um, heart rate technology works in all seasons of life. And at that point, I was peak performance, fitness, conditioning, they brought science into my training. They told me I had to slow down to heal, which was threatening to me. Slowing down was not part of the plan, right? But I obeyed their their uh, their advice, and I learned about VO2 max, uh, 
uh, gas exchanges and uh, you know cardiovascular anaerobic versus aerobic fitness conditioning measured by heart rate and getting into your 80% of your maximum heart rate and then doing your sprint intervals above that, I would have to maintain 60 minutes at 80% of my max before I started my sprint intervals on a machine called a Versa Climber, which is a beast of a machine and very unforgiving. So, um, you know, pay the price to earn what they said was one of the fittest women in America, according to uh, Muscle and Fitness. And, um, and that freedom I felt was unbelievable. I went, I didn't know what that would feel like. I'd pay hard for it, but it came, took me about six or eight months of like total dedication. They also introduced into my, my plan nutrient density. So nutrient density is like just eating the things that have the highest nutritional value, avoiding the, the high fat, sodium and sugar, uh, lean proteins and, you know, keeping a nice balanced diet. So, those basic science fundamentals are the, the, the nuts and bolts of the HEAL program. So when I first moved here in 2002, right after getting married and retiring and completely from this career, um, let me just put this on. Now I'm in charge of this or what? What just happened? Okay. Yeah. You <clears throat> so, um, when I was, uh, where was I? I'm going to go right into this next slide. Look, well, we talked about, I can't make this thing work. It's just a day. Right? Oh, there it is. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, we were talking about. You had just retired. I just retired, moved to Alabama. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, I was a fish out of water, as I'd said in the video. And I saw, though, this new mission, this new purpose that I really believe the Lord put in my heart. And I thought, oh my gosh, we could take the heart rate technology. We could take the nutrient density. We could put it in a curriculum and bring it to the kids in the elementary school age, you know, uh, PE programs. And I'm like, it's a no brainer. Well, you know, people looked at me like I was crazy in the front end of it, but we did get heart rate monitors on first graders and I love how Lottie's nodding her head because she's a PE teacher. She knows this is true. The, the minute we put those in the hands of the children and they saw that they have power over their own heart rate and they just came to life. And especially the children who learned to hate PE, who never felt good moving in PE, who hated competing with their neighbor, they were finally in their own zone. And for, you know, not killing themselves to go anaerobic in their heart zone, they were in their zone and they're walking and being rewarded for it. And those rewards would build. So anyway, we're going to, let's go back to the ANNO, Alabama not number one. Well, we are number one for some good things. And there's that little slide, which I think is so cute that baby's like, yeah, right? But we're also number one for all these bad things. And yeah, I'm not going to repeat Dr. Honan's lecture. Um, the thing that during the pandemic that happened, it, it really is upsetting because I felt like heal being at this now for 20 years, approximately. Um, we were making some real headway on, you know, reversing obesity within our sphere of influence and within our footprint. Well, now during COVID, uh, it, statistics say that between persons between the age two and 19 have doubled the rate of obesity doubled during COVID. So, uh, I think it's a lot of it to do with anxiety and depression. Um, so, um, and, and social disconnect that has a lot to do with the mental health problems going on out there. So, Obesity is connected to income losses, overall stress, increased sedentary living, becoming increasingly dependent on the healthcare system, and becoming a high risk surgical candidate. My husband and I recently opened up a multi specialty surgery center, and we treat people of, for all kinds of conditions. And the ones who live with these pre existing conditions are, you know, they, it's just a lot of suffering. It's difficult to, to fix all these problems and, and try to help the people. So it's essential that preventive measures be taken on a personal and responsible 
uh, level. So more bad news, hate that. Uh, <laughs> we're also ranked number 47 in education rankings. Um, and then we really struggle in the areas of reading and math, with our, which are essential for the, the careers of tomorrow, uh, which are very STEM related, which definitely puts an emphasis on math. So poor health and lack of education contributes to poverty. Health, education, and poverty are intrinsically linked. People living in poverty, poverty suffer with highest, the highest prevalence of obesity, chronic diseases, and lack of education. So Alabama is the sixth poorest state in America. Hey, good news. Um, <laughs> I'm done with the bad news, so now we can start to smile again. Uh, there is hope, and that is the whole point and purpose of HEAL. HEAL is an education engine that is delivering the truth, but also the why, the inspiration. But then the third part now is this beautiful social connectivity, which is so essential to motivation, drive, mental health, which takes us with all the knowledge of what we know we should do, but actually helps us to get engaged and do it. So that would be Heal United, a, a vehicle for hope. What is Heal? Heal is a nonprofit organization, 501c3, dedicated to designing and implementing innovative curricula that promote sustainable, healthy lifestyle behaviors for adults and children. Originally, Heal was only for children, but then as uh, necessity is the mother of invention, we evolved. So it's so funny. I look at these four faces right here. One is going to college this year. I can't believe it. Um, and the others, my nephews are in college. And then my other is going to be a senior. But Heal was born the year before my first son. And it proved to work. So I, I finally got my prayers answered and got my first baby. And I thought, well, I don't need a project anymore, right? But no, the need was prevalent and the project was working. So I thought, well, I can do both. I'll do both until I can't, right? <laughs> um, and so every year we, I built materials and my children were my greatest teachers. I mean, I learned through them and their peers and friends and their teachers what was really going on out in the real world and what are the barriers and what are the needs and how do we build things that are exciting, engaging, and actually work. So here we are going to college and HEAL every year has built things to meet the needs that we lived through all the way to this moment. And we're still building and learning and networking and partnering and it's so, so exciting. We've landed on our core values. We, we finally are full circle. And health uh, is hinged to education. And then that is hinged to career readiness, which leads to financial fitness. And then the full circle give back advocacy. So if you can't take care of yourself and try to manage and have resources, then it's going to be tough to give back. And so if we want to engage in all these things, because all these things add to quality of life and joy and, and just the, you know, the best things that we all hope and want for, um, we've got to look at each component. And it reminds me of this machine called a cyber knife. I don't know, raise your hand if you ever heard of a cyber knife. Okay, a few of you. CyberKnife is this really cool robotic machine. My husband's a neurosurgeon, so that's why I know about this. Um, and it can move 30, 360 degrees around a patient, and it blasts uh, lasers toward the target, which would possibly be a tumor. And then from all these different angles, it can destroy a tumor, tumor with never making an incision on the, on the person's scalp. Well, HEAL reminds me of that cyber knife. We are a single unit, but we are networking and hitting the target of suffering from chronic diseases, which is related to poverty. We're, we're, we're hitting every angle and element. And we're also entering through different channels of distribution. So this is a super fun new territory for us to be partnered with the church and faith uh, communities um, and, and making... Uh, 
a new approach to penetrate and support communities with health knowledge and inspiration. So what is it that is so important or why, why heal? Why is heal worth listening to? Because it works. Outcomes speak for themselves. Back when I first started this program, my husband's a scientist and, you know, and really he's like, if you're going to do something, do it right. And it has to be measurable. It has to be science based. It's got to be medically sound. All those things were a yes, yes, yes. So I handpicked the brightest and the best in their respective fields to be on the advisory board from doctors to professional educators, state leaders, possible stakeholders, and all of them share their brain power. And to this day, I'm nothing but a product of many advisors. And all of you I would listen to, uh, even now, we're constantly adapting to be better and relevant, um, flushing out what doesn't work and voting in what does. 75% um, of students enrolled in HEAL improved their cardiovascular fitness scores in just six months. That's our greatest claim. 99% of students consistently show improvement from pre to post test health knowledge assessments. 96% uh, share HEAL information with family, friends, and community, which is huge. And then 60% uh, increase their physical activity and 72% improve their eating behaviors. So that is a, that is a, that is a, a nice flow of success of hitting all the right notes. Um, in the early days, we were allowed to test BMI in the school systems. That is no longer a thing. But when we could, we found that this is what took place in six to eight months of the HEAL program. Um, by the way, HEAL is uh, lesson plans that are given to teachers, and we'll see a little bit more about that in a few minutes. But um, what we saw was that children that were ranked in the obese category actually shifted to the um, overweight category by 18%, whereas the controls, which are schools that were equally matched in social economic status and race, um, showed that they were they improved by 10%. Overweight to healthy weight, heal schools uh, changed categories by 33% while the controls 22. And then overweight to obese, this is where it gets interesting because the trends for overweight to obese tend to grow. Um, and so in this situation, uh, heals growth was zero and the controls went that direction by 11%. This was a touching study as well um, for students living with morbid obesity. Um, we were able to actually improve their PACER test scores. To, raise your hand if you know what a PACER test score is. Some of you, not all of you. So do you remember the mile run? That was a state standard required cardiovascular test. Well, nobody can do the mile anymore. So they quit doing the mile run, which is sad, pitiful, but that's the condition of our community. We now do the pacer. The pacer is a like a, a measured distance with a cadence of a beep, and the student has to run from one piece of tape to the other before the next beep. And they go back and forth until they are late to the tape by a beep. So uh, students that are really fit can do like 47 pacers. Students who are morbidly obese might be three, maybe. And that's if you can get them to do it. I've had students actually cut themselves with something sharp to bleed because they'd rather go to the nurse than have to do their PACER score. It is so sad to see the pain that they live with uh, socially, physically, in every way, shape, and form. Um, but what was so great is they got their little heart rate monitor on. They were no longer having to deal with their neighbors. <laughs> they got into their own little zone and they increased their steps. Then they saw their heart rate start to slip, come down a little bit. So this slow walk turned into a little brisker walk. And then they built on success. And we have success stories, which are really exciting um, to help those who hurt the most. Uh, here are some more uh, measures, and I'm going to zip through because there's more to cover, but and, and you can 
always ask me for my PowerPoint if you want to review it closer, but UAB has been a partner of ours since inception, and the School of Education uh, uh, students, you know, reviewed all of our data and and reported these statistics that we were statistically significantly better than the control schools in all areas of knowledge and behavior for improvement of the healthy lifestyle. And then same with the uh, cardiovascular improvements, um, significantly improved over the controls. And then sustainability outcomes. Um, the Actually, the Division of Cardiovascular Disease at UAB reviewed years of our data because we do ongoing assessments and see, they reported that they saw results that were consecutive several years in a row. So we're showing consistent sustainability, which is incredible. And that every school that starts with HEAL, uh, we raise all the funds and we provide it to the schools at no cost. Um, it costs us about $5,000 a school to implement HEAL. Um, and every school asks that they could continue HEAL year after year a 99% return rate. I attribute that to some advice Governor Riley gave me way back when, um, where I said, every school needs heal. You could just say so, right? <laughs> and he said, no, that doesn't work well that way. He said, um, what you need to do is make it teacher driven. You have to make teachers want heal. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's exhausting, right? So we went back to the drawing board and so our growth was slow and painful, but solid foundation. And so Ms. Lottie will attest to you that we jumped through hoops to make this teacher friendly, make every experience for the teacher a pleasure and rewarding. So, and that begins with, um, that begins with teacher trainings. And we're going to cover that in a second. But here, uh, this is Sanford University, um, uh, Dr. Floyd. <coughs> He had his students review qualitative and quantitative effort of our Heal Hero testimonies. And I mentioned earlier, every student sends in a Heal Hero testimony, how they, how the, how the experience changed their life, what healthy changes did they make, and then who did they help, and how did they help them. And they tell their stories. And back in the beginning, I used to read every single one. I would lay in bed, and it would be my nighttime reading piles of them, because that was I'm like, I get compensated in these papers, you know, not not in money, but in, in testimonies. And um, and so now we have 40,000 testimonies. So it's like not possible to read them all. But um, um, but the students did and they reported that we are making significant progress with changing health behavior, not just for the individual, but they are influencing their households and their neighborhoods. So, uh, you know, I'm so excited to see what's gonna happen in the church context. That's gonna be really fun. Um, Heal effectively unifies all sectors of society. So, and, you know, as I said, necessity is the mother of invention. It started off just for children, but guess what? We needed to build something for teachers so that they would role model the life and not, you know, just preach, but they gotta practice what they preach. So we did that. We built very comprehensive professional development trainings for our teachers, which we have about 300 professional educators under our umbrella today. Um, they, too, also changed their households. So whole families buy into the concept. So we built uh, materials that help families embrace the life together and help each other. So we created that support system for the child by building Heal at Home uh, materials. Then um, we also partner very nicely with a variety of stakeholders and advocacy groups and then state and national leaders. We listen to them. We try to stride alongside of them and meet the, the needs at hand. Um, Walker Area has been with us for a long time, and they credit HEAL um, for helping them go from dead last in the uh, Robert Wood Johnson County Health Rankings from 67th to 58th. And I think that's great progress. Any progress is good progress, and we're just getting started. Um, now we're all into this strong start, strong finish stuff, okay? This is an initiative that um, was, was established by Governor Ivey, which is fantastic. Um, she's also very passionate for the Literacy Act and the Numeracy Act. 
Why? Because the, the jobs of now and the fastest growing job sector that is paying lucrative incomes uh, would be in the STEM field, science, technology, engineering, and math. And what blew my mind when I did a big research on this and produced this book, One, Two, Three is the Heel Way, it's also a launch on get little ones gaining an understanding of what STEM is. And as I researched how to communicate this topic to a kindergartner or first grader, um, it got interesting. And I realized that STEM is in every single industry. So even a zoo, it, it depends on STEM. It's all about data and engineering. And, you know, I mean, just STEM is in everything. And, and so math is a building block for STEM. So we built one, two, three is the heel way to address those early development, emergent numeracy. And then we got ABCs the heel way, the emergent reading skills. And then we have treasure hunt, which is really hitting around fourth and fifth grade, but that depends on the slippage. Today, slippage is tra traumatic. Um, we have eighth graders reading fourth grade level. Uh, we have, you know, third graders just getting started. Um, we also know that if a student is not on track for third grade reading level, that their uh, risk for dropout spikes. So we've got a lot of work to do. And um, our goal is to take and make sure these children end up with diplomas, but then transfer those diplomas to W-2s. We want them to get jobs and we want them to know how to manage their money so that they can take care of themselves and ones they love and give back to society. Here's a bunch of, of our current partners, but the list is uh, growing and thanks to the company that I'm keeping today. Um, here are some of our stakeholders and partners. And fortunately, the Alabama Department of Public Health and Education confirmed that HEAL is credited for helping Seven, uh, schools fulfill seven out of 10 federal wellness components when that's part of the policy stuff that Dr. Honan referred to. There are policies out there requiring these health behavior checks to be boxes to be checked off. Our curriculum empowers a school to check off seven out of 10 of those boxes. And our schools also have been given national recognition. So even though Alabama is 47th for health, I mean, for for education rankings, heel schools in Alabama are of the best in the nation and have been recognized for that by the Alliance of the Healthier Generation. I like being number one um, for the good stuff. All right, so medically supported evidence-based approach. Everything in heel content is evidence-based and peer-reviewed and airtight, rock solid, medically sound. That's, we don't go outside of those lines. And I, I believe that, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a faith-based person. My mother was my faith anchor. She taught me how to, uh, to think and live this way. And I, I will say that, um, I think God created science. So I feel like sticking with science is sticking on the side of the Lord and that works. And I'll tell you, it's the truth. It just simply works. And so it's great. Um, you can rest assured that there's it's solid and you can be confident. Um, this is a really neat image. This is an MRI scan. I got this from a lecture of one of the most published neuropsychiatrists in the world. He's from Harvard University. His name is Dr. John Rady. And he's the most published about how exercise helps with brain performance. And he's also on the HEAL advisory board. Well, he provided me this slide because they've proven that if you can let a child move um, for like 20 minutes before a test or something, that the, the, the scan to the right indicates how much more awake and alive the brain activity is. And it hugely allows children to be able to listen longer, retain more, and sit still. You know, ADHD is kind of a big thing um, out there. But some of it can be cured by just getting kids some proper physical activity combined with nutrition. This advocacy thing, I'm reading all kinds of new reports coming out about how uh, they did a control intervention 
uh, study of givers, receivers, and those who are not doing anything. And it actually, they took measures, the cardiovascular measures, which I'm not gonna act like I can talk authoritatively in that department, but I will say this much, um, that the givers' heart rates were lower than the receivers, as well as the controls. Same with the diabolic blood pressure and the mean arterial pressure. So there is a physical effect that happens for being a giver. So it's, it's a beautiful design, I believe the Lord put in play. Steady, cautious growth. Oh, that's what we have been. And um, we have been uh, asked to share heal outside of the uh, outside of Alabama. This is our Alabama footprint. We started off in one school as an experiment, and today we're in 175 K through 12 schools, 54 school systems, 34 counties, 37,000 students, 91,000 family members, and we reach 1.4 million households weekly on Alabama public television. Um, we're currently partnered up with the Live Health Smart UAB effort that Dr. Hunter referred to, and they are the, the most at risk communities for all of these things. Um, and so we're very grateful to partner with them because we can't do this alone. We really have to work together and unite. But the little bit that we've already seen and done, it's like shining a light in darkness. It is bringing hope to communities, putting smiles on faces. It is just super fun. Um, over 70% of our footprint represents Title I schools. Title I schools are the ones most dependent on free and reduced lunches based on the social economic status of the community. Uh, this is our footprint outside of Alabama. So we are starting that, that growth effort. We've got 13 states on a waiting list. We've agreed to begin with Arkansas and we've launched um, a Heal Arkansas effort through Harding University. From there, they hope to penetrate their communities similar to Alabama. So yes, Alabama is beginning to be number one in the nation for something really good. And I hope it's the HEAL United movement. Um, we also have some missionaries that took HEAL materials to help children in Africa uh, through education systems and helping them learn to learn English and math and stuff like that. So the HEAL way. What sets HEAL apart? Well, two things, dependable services for our teachers. Like I said, we are teacher driven. We love on our teachers. We get them uh, into the professional development trainings. We, we equip them to not only take care of their students, but know how to take care of themselves. We give, give them heart monitors to use for their own personal use in their classrooms. Um, and then we, we hire retired professional uh, educators and make them heal independent contractors and then they are appointed to help check on our schools in various territories. Each coordinator will have their set of schools and they become a friend and a, a, a help. So they'll, they'll pop in and make sure they're on schedule because if they're on schedule, they'll get their results. Um, we also make sure their heart rate monitors don't have dead batteries. If they do, we quickly take the dead batteries and give them fresh ones. Never, never, never is heels stagnant. Heel is always moving. Um, dynamic materials. We invest in high quality. If you touch and feel what we have out at our booth, you'll see what I'm talking about. These books are dry erase, very heavy material. Why is it wise? You know, it, penny wise, pound foolish, or uh, why um, reach for a trip over a dollar when you're reaching for a penny? These little cliches are ones that my, that my dad instilled in me about money management. Sometimes if, if you do you buy well, you buy once, right? So anyway, these books are so sturdy that a classroom teacher could have one for every student and then use it for multiple classes. They keep these in the classroom and the children with dry erase pens can trace their letters and numbers and they learn to, uh, they learn oral communication, they learn how to write and how to read. So. A lot of boxes are checked off with our heel book system. So this is our K through 12 images of our curricula. We offer each school a 12 poster classroom set. This is four of the 12 that shows the sequence of the curricula. 
we go through what it means to be healthy and even talk about, you know, recharging your battery by getting enough hours of sleep. Uh, on into active, we go into the heart rate, anatomy and technology and how many minutes you need to get in your zone to be able to really uh, experience the health benefits, the preventive health benefits. And then eating the nutrient density concepts. And we also have games that support that where by fifth grade, you know, have you ever seen the game, are you smarter than a fifth grader? Well, our fifth graders can discern about 300 food images and tell adults what category of um, uh, the food groups they fit in. Also, what part of the body each food item benefits. So like our students know that protein supports muscles and they know that milk supports bones and they know that berries support brain performance. And so when they're coming up on testing, you know, we try to get them you know, to, to eat well and sleep well and move so they can do their very best. And then of course, living. That's a big one. You gotta make it a lifestyle. It's gotta be a lifestyle and there's no one who will sustain it if it's not enjoyable. So we always find ways to make it fun and enjoyable. And that also, you know, hugely is connected to the social engagement aspect. There's little ones checking their heart rate. And our game systems, I mentioned that. And these are our calendars. Our family engagement materials are monthly, you know, full color impact calendars that have seasonal produce and recommendations for how to uh, save time and money and prepare healthy meals um, with the maximum nutrient density. And, you know, we thought, oh, we'll save a ton of money and just go digital on these. Well, we tried that and we had a huge pushback. Lots of families complained that they were used to hanging them on their refrigerator and following them verbatim. They would take them with them to the grocery stores and buy everything that was recommended. So we were really pleased to get that feedback. So once again, we decided, uh-oh, we better go back to that investment because that investment is making an impact. We also have really great um, workbooks that are full of home plays. Home plays are activities that they have to go home and do instead of homework um, and engage the family members in the life. Um, here's our book systems. I've already covered that a little bit. Rennie is our mascot. He's a silhouette character designed to be anyone at any age, representing any ethnicity, race, or gender. Rennie is a champion for healthy living and is in the business of training health leaders. Anyone could be a heel hero. So here's an interesting stealth approach that we use to uh, make children heel heroes and undercover heel agents in the household. So this is our treasure hunt workbook. It's a black and white coloring book full of activities, but it also tells the whole story, which educates the adult and the child at the same time of how and why to embrace the heel way of life. So a child's assignment is to take their little workbook home and get one of the adults to read aloud to them. There's a ton of health benefits that come from reading aloud to a child. And unfortunately, there are many children who no one has ever read aloud to them. And if they can get that to happen, there's a lot, they even say that the DNA coils in the brain of a child who gets read to unwind and that they experience a lot of social emotional wellness as a result of that. And then parent child relationships bond. And it's a lot of beautiful outcomes that come from reading aloud to a child. If a child does not have someone that can do the assignment with them, and this is how we find out if they do or they don't, then we have volunteers in the school that will be that adult that will hold them and read aloud to them. So they will get those benefits another way. One, two, three is the heel way. It comes with a song and a dance. I was hoping to do it, but I don't know if we have time for that. And um, my son is like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Strong finish. Um, middle school and high school curricula has been built and we fit heel the facets of heel in career tech courses, career prep in the middle school um, age groups. We have a really awesome family and consumer science program where instead of emphasizing the physical fitness part, we have a uh, like a heelicious recipe challenge and winners have been uh, uh, put on Alabama public television, like the Food Network style. So students have to 
uh, make what they think is healthy and delicious, heelicious, and then other students have to come in and blind taste test for taste, and then they also have to know the content of the, their ingredients. I, they have to give a full, uh, beautiful presentation of how and why they built this meal and why they should win. And if they're good, they end up on Alabama Public Television. And so we have a lot of fun and we got a lot of buy-in. The first year we did this, I said, oh, we'll give a really great gift to the winner, right? Incentivize buy-in. Middle schoolers, that's not an easy thing to do. And um, so I went ahead and got a Publix gift card for the household. And my kids were in middle school. They're like, you're doing what? That is a lead balloon. That's just going to hit the ground. That's terrible, you know? So, you know, my kids suffered the bullying of my poor idea. And, um, and quickly we pivoted and bought a GoPro. And then everybody signed up, from the football players to the math wizards to the, you know, everybody in between. I had tuna tartar built by a football player with um, a, another child making the greatest guacamole dip you've ever tasted. I mean, it was just so fun and very, very educational. This is our hottest thing right now, dual enrollment high school college credit course. That's a lot to say, and there's a lot in it. This is something so important. It's in the process of credentialing. I've been writing this for the last eight months with a bunch of professors. It is literally 45 hours of a college credit of a full cert certification that does this. It teaches heal wellness life skills credential and it says to an employer that that person applying for the job understands and is committed to practicing healthy behaviors that support job performance, punctuality, and attendance. So uh, if you pair this credential with another skill credential, which there are lots of great trade opportunities for people right now who are coming out of high school and maybe don't have the opportunity to go to a four-year college. They can jump into a skill like, say, welding. But if you're a welder but you don't show up on time, or you're a welder and you didn't save enough money to put gas in your car so you didn't get to work at all, okay? This happens all the time. So skilled employees don't mean they're dependable employees. So we built something that doesn't exist, and this credential is going to be really powerful in helping students who live in poverty, who want to get out of the clutches of poverty, they need to follow this recipe along with a skill, show up and be a valuable employee. Then what they got to do <laughs> is we, in this course, we also offer financial management. We have partnered with Regions Bank. So a component of that course teaches you how to become a valuable employee, but then also how to do the basics of money management. And then of course, we always preach, always give back, help somebody in need. Then finally, we are in college and universities. What does that look like? It looks different for each campus. And that's what's great about HEAL is that there's a lot of flexibility and adaptability. You can interweave HEAL in a good existing program or you can throw out yours and just replace it. There's lots of flexibility. And at Faulkner, HEAL is taught and is woven into the existing um, undergrad core curricula. They also support our online certification course, which I'm going to extend an invitation to anyone who would like to become a HEAL ambassador. You are welcome to do so. And um, they host wellness events on campus that match up their education and allow for that social connectivity. And Jeff State uh, has woven heal materials into their culinary nutrition program. And so both Faulkner and Jeff State have also been uh, resources where my seniors who choose to go into the health sciences or into culinary, they will be well received by these universities and scholarships are, are in place for those who qualify. So we're trying to really help. We call it getting the elevator up and out. I want these kids to go through the education, but then get into a real good paying job. And then this is Heal and Harding in Searcy, Arkansas, which my boys are going to. So I'm excited. They can't escape. I'm sorry. Um, 
<laughs> so they opened up a really nice little office. He, HU is Harding University, so it's HU Heal. And they've decided that it's ministry because that's a Christian campus. And um, all the students you're seeing in this picture have stepped up to become Heal ambassadors. And they are, you know, workout enthusiasts. They're probably going to be educators or they're going to be uh, sports um, rehab what it, you know, they're, they're interested in kinesiology and that way of life. Well, anyway, they actually will reach out to undergrad students who look detached or lonely or disengaged, and they will bring them in and, um, and work, make a workout plan for them, uh, show them what kind of health resources are available, even go with them to play some basketball. So it's a mentor type of opportunity um, for Harding. And then finally, heal heroes, my favorite thing, from little ones to, to elderly ones. Um, this is the heart and soul that motivates the spirit of heal and, and flows the loving nature of heal. Jadion is a really fun story I love to share. This little cutie pie actually was in a lot of trouble. He uh, got kicked out of school for violent behavior, I mean expelled. So. You can only imagine. And um, the next year he came back, they started the HEAL program. And he listened that in the front end of the, of the year, they say anyone who chooses to buy into and, and be part of this HEAL program wholeheartedly and helps others would possibly be the HEAL hero of the year. And that gets named in the springtime. And it's nominated by peers and teachers. So HEAL, if you're a heel school, we put together a box of really cool things for that heel hero. So it's the coveted medal. It's like an Olympic gold medal. I mean, it's, we make a big deal out of it. Well, this little guy decided right in the beginning he was going to be that heel hero. He, instead of being a mean bully in PE, he decided to be the teacher's assistant coach. <laughs> <laughs> and he did so well that over 200 kids not, uh, voted for him. He was an, unanimously picked the heel hero. Well, the story gets better. So he is in the foster care system. And this woman who was one of his foster care takers is a lady named Anna Threadcraft. You may know of her. She used to be the employee wellness director of UAB. Today she lives, she works for Delta, but at that moment, she said, oh my gosh, this program I've never heard of helped my child. I need to know about this. So she emails me and we become fast friends. Then we sat together and wrote the grant that helped win the grand challenge, million dollar grant that launched Live Health Smart. And so just go back. How did I meet Anna? How did... You know, I mean, where we are today, the zones for Live Health Smart, I'm now partnered with Mona Fawad, Dr. Fawad, and, and this whole church networking. And this is all goes back to J.D. on this cute little guy. He started all that. <laughs> so, you know, um, the power of investing in one person, the ripple effect, it's incredible. And then this is another heel hero, uh, Marlon Humphrey. He's on uh, Baltimore Ravens. He's like the star cornerback of the NFL today. He happens to be the son of Bobby Humphrey, who's an executive board member for, for Heel. Um, and others would be Taylor Hicks, uh, uh, Chef Frank Stitt, Kathy G, Antonio Langham, Sherry Jackson, Chris Hastings. All of these people have contributed to the Heel movement. And so Heel is a product of a lot of talent. Happy Heal Day. Governor Ivey declared that there would be a state holiday. And this is we've just completed our fourth annual Heal Day. I'll let you hear her melodic voice for one second. Oh, can't hear it. It's okay. Um, anyway, it's an honor and a pleasure. She's fully backing our movement and helping helping fan the flames. And so you can be a heel hero by becoming a heel community ambassador. This is our initiative that lines up with Anno, a new year. And uh, 
For information on how to become a Heal Ambassador, we will forward to your emails if you guys inquire about it. There's a lot of type on this slide, and I know that's never a good thing for a slide. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we can get you plugged in. You can sign up for our um, next online course, which uh, happens to be July 3rd. Um, this course is simple. It's like very flexible. It's very friendly and enriching. Um, it's uh, If you want it for a real college credit, it's about $300 through Faulkner. Um, but if you want it just for personal enrichment and to become a leader in your sphere of influence, it's $200. And we do have a fund set aside for scholarships for those who would qualify. And we'll, um, for more information, go to healunited.org and or contact Kayla, who's sitting here in the front with the blonde ponytail. And lastly, this is no new thing. I mean, it goes all the way back to Thomas Edison. The doctor of the future will give no medicine, but will instruct his patients in care of the human frame, in diet and in the cause and prevention of disease. I mean, we're going full circle here. This is what needs to happen because these poor doctors cannot shoulder the sustainability of the weight and the stress of what's happening with the prevalence of chronic diseases. And this is the final slide, Genius Cluster. It's a really cool book that I read. It's called The Geography of Genius. And it is the intersection of time, place, and collaborative passion that sparks big things. And they feature uh, ancient Greece in the book, but as far as America goes, uh, the revolution as well as the explosion of Silicon Valley those were two huge change moments and change agents that changed the world, or, or at least our world and our country. So I really believe HEAL has the power, the structure, is the vehicle that could really do this kind of impact uh, that we all hope for. So thank you for your time and attention.